Hey gang, welcome to Time in the Market, the investing channel with a long-term focus, taking a look at Monster Beverage Company, ticker MNST. Stock is down 11.5% in the past five days, down about 22% in the past year. So what's going on? Well, Q2 earnings straight up sucked, 2.5% growth for the quarter. That is a problem for a company that's grown at 10%. And I think investors and analysts expect it to grow at about 10% for the next couple of years or so given their multiple. You can kind of see that their growth here, 10% plus for a decade plus, which is really impressive. A reason this stock has been one of the best performing stocks in the stock market during that period. If you go back to like owning this stock 2008 or before, you are a rich, rich man if you owned enough. But in the last couple of years, they've started to struggle. Expectations for 24 are coming down quite a bit. 13% growth down to 6% growth. So what's really driving the big drop off in growth? Well, one, the main reason is that the energy drink space is slowing down in a big way. This is a drink space that has grown in the high single digits for quite some time. Now is expected to grow in the low single digits for 2024. That's a problem for Monster and other energy drink companies. There's a reason that Celsius is down a lot. There's a reason Monster is down a lot. Secondly, competition is heating up. Monster is losing market share. I talked about Celsius in another video I did. I'll link it down below. But essentially, out of that 3% market, 3% uh, growth that is coming in 2024, Celsius has taken like half of that on a dollar share basis. Monster is not growing their market share. They're losing it. That's a bit of a problem. That's certainly going to be a concern for investors going forward. One of the things you see when a company like Monster is they have gotten a very hefty multiple based on the historical growth that has been embedded here and the expectations for that growth continuing. You kind of see that even though there's a slowdown in 24, people just expect it to keep growing almost at 10% in 25. If that doesn't happen, that's a big problem for a company like Monster and a big problem for investors in Monster. So Monster is passing through some price increases in November of 24. We'll see how that impacts growth on a go forward basis. But if the consumer is struggling, you know, they talked about the consumer not going to the convenience store as much as before, basically impacting their sales there. They're talking about how even going into July, they're seeing some of their measured channels dropping off, but some of their non measured channels doing OK. They did talk about some strengths internationally, but obviously that's being impacted by currency issues. So there's some upside here if they can return back to growth based on those price increases, based on volume being consistent combined with price increases leading to growth from a better comparable in 2025 versus 2024, starting with Q2. But the concern is going to be if this is not a short term trend, but a long term transition in the consumer looking at their expenses more closely and cutting back on some items that they may consider discretionary, like energy drinks and or buying down to cheaper items. That could be a problem for a company like Monster that is getting a that has gotten a pretty rich multiple. So this is kind of what I'm talking about. This is from their 2023 presentation. Market share in the last 13 weeks of 2023 for all measured channels, down 140 basis points for Monster, up 460 basis points for Celsius, up 100 basis points for C4, up 70 basis points for Ghost and Alani New. So they're losing market share. And that's not just something that's new and stopping in the at the start of 2023 on a dollar share basis they had 30.8 percent of the market and that is continually dropping and even going into q3 the data for july 14th here down from what it was at the latter part of q2 so that's certainly concerning for investors if i'm looking at uh a company like Monster and I'm looking at its valuation, sort of comparing it to other players in the space, you can kind of see it's still getting a, you know, 27 X multiple on a free cash flow basis. That's kind of in line with Coca-Cola, uh, but much more expensive than something like Pepsi, much more expensive than something like KDB. And the reason for that is it's historically grown at a much faster clip. But if that's coming to an end, should the valuation start coming down a little bit, maybe into that 4% range versus the closer to 3% range. And then you look at Celsius, again, more richly valued, but Celsius in the latest quarter grew at 23% versus a 2.5% growth for Monster. So a much smaller company, but growing a lot faster. So a lot of things to keep in mind with a company like Monster, but certainly a lot of pressure on their growth that is going to impact their future return potential. So again, disclaimer, video is purely for informational, educational, and timber purposes only. It is not investment advice. Again, this is a quick video. If you want more information about the energy drink space, watch my Celsius video. I go 
over it a bit more there. So again, Monster is the ticker, $45 billion market cap. Uh, slowing growth here, I think analysts are expecting this growth to kind of ramp up after this year, which I find a bit questionable. They're expecting margins to kind of stay the same, improve a little bit, which again, maybe that's the case. They can pass through pricing. The question is going to be, that is probably going to impact margins favorably, but is going to impact unit volume negatively. So no debt issues. They actually spent $3 billion recently buying back shares at a price of $53. So the stock price is down a bit since then. So maybe not the best timing, but certainly returning money to shareholders via buybacks, about half a billion every single year for the most part. That $3 billion this year was a big one. And anytime they generate free cash flow, they generally tend to return that via buybacks. They've made some acquisitions in the past. They kind of sued Bang into oblivion. They bought them out of bankruptcy eventually. But beyond that, they've sort of grown internally and generated free cash flow and bought back shares using that free cash flow. So good balance sheet. That's a bonus. The question is, though, where does it go from here as far as growth goes? I have about 6.5% growth in 24. Returning to increasing growth in 25, uh, and then sort of slowing growth from there. Margins are improving by about 200 basis points between today and 2028. Most of the money going towards buybacks. And I'm kind of trying to figure out what kind of assumptions do I have to make to make the valuation it's sitting at today make sense. And basically with this growth assumption, with this free cash flow margin assumption, with this buyback assumption, I sort of have to put the valuation free cash flow yield at a three and a half percent free cash flow yield, which is kind of rich given that companies like, you know, Keurig, uh, Dr. Pepper, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola kind of are rated closer to that four, four and a half, five percent range even. So, you know, if I sort of make this at three and a half percent free cash flow yield, I'm giving it a bit of a better multiple. And maybe that's realistic given that their free cash flow margins are really good. Uh, maybe that's really where it should be priced. So given that, I get a fair value of about 44 bucks if I'm targeting a, a target return of about 10%, gets me an expected return of about 8.8%, which is pretty good. But my worry here is that if they continue showing slowing growth, that the market is going to re-rate this closer to 4%, which is probably where a company that's showing slowing growth should be. I'm probably being pretty optimistic here with the 8% growth in 2025, especially if the consumer continues to struggle going into the next year, if there is even a light recession, if there's continued pressure on the wallets, if there's continued competition from all of those other players, obviously Celsius has a partnership with Pepsi for distribution, uh, Ghost has a partnership with InBev. So a lot of these other companies are really encroaching on Monster's business and that's causing them to lose market share. And it's going to be difficult to continue growing in the high single digits when you're losing market share. Certainly you can push through pricing, but in a market environment like this where consumers are trying to save money, a 5% price raise that they're going to push through in 2024, it's hard to tell how that's going to impact their business. So if I assume this, if you're comfortable with this, I get a fair value of about 44 bucks. If I go to 100% in the 4% range, I get down to about 38 bucks. Now, obviously, if it returns to its historical free cash flow yield of about 3%, looks at about an 11.7% return, a fair value of about 49 bucks. If you can get comfortable with that, given the slowing growth, maybe today's price point is interesting. But for me, I think I need something closer to the $38 range to really look at this closely. Uh, and even then, it's like I'm still making pretty significant assumptions and giving this the benefit of the doubt, giving this the valuation of the brand name that it is, the monster market share that it holds and assuming that it's going to at least retain you know high 20 percent market share continue to have pricing power be able to raise it you know four to five percent every single year or so not lose market share continue to benefit from the energy drink space growing in the low single digits because if you you know if you contain market share as it is benefit from two to three percent growth in the energy drink space raise pricing power a little bit, you can certainly get to the mid to high single digit revenue growth that I'm projecting here. And with that, you can improve margins. Again, this is a company that had margins in the high 20s before the pandemic. So there's been some cost pressure on their side. They haven't passed through enough prices to offset that. If they can, if they can have that pricing power, if they could get margins even to, into the mid 20s from today's price point, this could be an amazing return because you can put a 25% in here, even at a 4% yield, you get to a 43. If you get to that three and a half percent yield, you get to a 49. So I sort of 
get where the market is pricing this. I think the assumption here is still that this is going to be a short-term blip on the growth radar, and it's going to return to growth starting next year. But I'm just not sure if I'm comfortable with that. However, if there's a little bit of a dip, a little bit of a, a market correction again, and this gets into the high 30s, I'd certainly be interested at that point. So let me know what you think about Monster. Uh, are you more interested in Monster than Celsius, or is Celsius more interesting at today's price point given their growth potential? Uh, leave a comment down below. Like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye.